singing our gathering song number 309. Gather your people number 309. Please rise. Gather your people, O Lord. Gather your people, O Lord. One bread, one body, one spirit of love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Friends, we are gathered this weekend to celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Here at St. Thomas More, this is also our, our annual Guatemala weekend, where we celebrate uh, our decades-long relationship with the people of uh, San Andres Itzapa in Guatemala. Uh, so as you walked into the narthex, you see evidence of our relationship, the many investments that we've made, including uh, the gift of many parishioners who have visited Guatemala. So as we gather in a joy over that relationship, we also call to mind moments this week when we have failed to honor our relationships in life, especially in moments when we have begrudgingly 
uh, shown envy or jealousy towards the good things that have fallen into the laps of our neighbors. So calling to mind those moments, let us ask now for the Lord's forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We give you thanks for your great glory. God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to all who call upon Him. Every day will I bless You, and I will praise Your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. 
After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too, go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon, and around three o'clock, and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. This week in the life of the church is a week focused on issues related to migration and refugees and exiles. And back in March, uh, the church had a, a day focused on, on this topic. And every day, uh, every year uh, on this day, the, the church focuses on a, a particular aspect of, of a right that belongs to to the migrant or the exile or the refugee community. And this year in 2023, that focus was on the right of a person to be able to remain in their land. It was the right to stay put. And the reality is things like crime and unemployment and climate catastrophes force people to move who do not want to move. No one wants to leave their home. And the reality is there are forces out there that cause people to need to move for the sake of safety or their family's welfare or protection from the environment. One of the great gifts that our, our decades-long relationship with the people in Guatemala enables is for people to stay home. It's to remain in a land, in a culture, in a society that's home to them by investing in their community, providing them with education, tools and skill sets to, to be employed. It's one of the things that we should be proud of as a hallmark here at, at St. Thomas More. Many of you have travel to Guatemala over the years. We, we send pilgrims there every year. We'll have more in the future. This weekend out in the Narthex 
in our kiosks, you can see evidence of some of the investments that we've made and uh, talk with many of our parishioners who have ventured down to Guatemala and can give firsthand reports on, on the good that our relationship is, is doing. If you'd like financially to support this ongoing ministry in your pews, our Guatemala envelopes, and we invite you to, to simply take this, and if you don't want to use it this weekend, you can use it at a future collection. Um, but put anything in here and you can throw it into the collection basket this weekend, or if you'd like to hand this off to one of our, the members of our Guatemala Action Team or one of our volunteers who are back there at the kiosks and the stands and the displays, uh, you can hand this off to one of them. Um, for some of them out there, if the, the boost is if you go out there, um, there are some, uh, some um, gifts that you get uh, for certain donations. Uh, for, for $20, you'll get a book that's established about our relationship here at St. Thomas More uh, with the people of Guatemala. It's just newly published. And for all donations, uh, there are some suckers out there. So, so you can get some candy on your way out. For Anyway, so again, uh, thank you for those of you who have continued to support this ministry. Thank you for those who have gone down. And again, um, our participation in this is enabling people to do something that the Universal Church has focused in on this year for migrants, refugees, and, and exiles, which is the right to be able not to move, but to be able to stay, to stay home. Um, now, our gospel today ties in well with this. This gospel rubs a lot of us the long, wrong way for anyone who's paid attention to this. For, for anyone who has sort of an A-type personality, can kind of keep their nose to the grindstone, there could be a lot of shade casting to the people around us who we think aren't pulling their weight, right? Um, there could be bitterness and resentment. Sometimes it's not articulated, and, and often it's not even conscious. It's just a feeling that people around me are skating by while I'm breaking into a sweat trying to keep things moving. The gospel today um, asks us to take some variables into consideration that, that we often don't when we grow embittered and resentful of the people around us who we think aren't carrying their fair share. So in the gospel today, 20th chapter of Matthew, Jesus gives a parable of a owner of a vineyard who goes out in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He finds his workers and they're off. And then at nine o'clock, he goes to the marketplace and there are men standing around and he asks what they're looking for and, and, and they're looking for work because that's where you would have gone if you were looking for work. You would have gone to the marketplace in the hopes that someone would have hired you. And so he says, okay, I'll hire you. Off to the vineyard. And Matthew tells us he does this again at 12 o'clock, three hours later. And at three o'clock, three hours after that, he keeps going back to the same place, finding new individuals with the same intention. They're there because they want to work. And finally, at five o'clock, the sun has almost go da gone down in the sky, and he's there again, and he still finds individuals. Why are you standing here idle? Because no one has hired us. You two, into my vineyard. There's an understanding here that, that these individuals that the owner is picking up as the day goes on are individuals who are eager to offer themselves for the good of another, for the good of their family. That is, they're willing to put in the effort. They're, they're willing to go the distance, and they have no opportunity. It, it hasn't come their way. Nothing has broken their way yet. And there's an implicit understanding that this is part of the calculus that the owner is doing when he picks up these individuals. These people would have been in my vineyard working for me if I'd gotten to them beforehand. 
if I had come into contact with them. So yeah, I've lost a few hours of their labor in the vineyard, but their will was there, their intention was there, the thing that wasn't afforded them was, was opportunity. And so the, the owner has done this calculation in his head that this should be sewn in with the just wage that he's going to give them. So at the end of the day, what he gives to, to every one of them is the exact same amount. And of course, some who have actually spent time in the vineyard the entire day bristle at this. And they bristle because they haven't done some of the calculating that the landowner does, which is that these are individuals who through no fault of their own weren't able. Now, the invitation for this is not to apply this to economic theory. It's to apply it to the other people in our life who sometimes we think are getting good things coming to them undeservedly. And the gospel today is an invitation for us to step back and say, what are the variables that I am taking into consideration? And are there hidden variables there that if I put them into play would change the calculus in my mind about what is just? And if you and I would be able to do that a little more often, to look at my neighbor who I think is getting something undeservedly and envy and jealousy begin to rage in my heart, to be able to step back in that moment and say, okay, is there something else? Is there something else that's not the surface that's going on here? That this good thing for them is something that I can rejoice in too. That maybe they have been open to this. Maybe they've been struggling. Maybe through no fault of their own, they've been treading water for a long time. And finally, something has happened to them that I should rejoice in. That's a good thing. You and I can, can easily sow in our hearts part of the fall of humanity, brisk competition with our neighbor, right? Life is a zero-sum game. If you're getting ahead, it means I'm falling behind. We, we all do this to some capacity, and we're all tempted to, to fall into it. This is not the template of the gospel. Life is not a zero-sum game. We shouldn't play that. Your victory does not mean my defeat. We can both be victorious. We can both win. We can both advance. And so today's a, a, an occasion to just reflect again with the people in my life who I'm tempted to be envious or jealous about, whether there is a hidden variable there that I need to take into consideration, something that the Lord himself is incorporating into his math. And if you and I can do that, it'll take the edge off and will enable me to see my neighbor as a neighbor and not as an enemy or a threat or my competitor. And if you and I can do that, we will begin to then emulate what the landowner says specifically about his heart, that I'm generous. I'm generous. This is who God reveals himself to us to be. God of a generous heart. So brothers and sisters, may we receive graces to be on the lookout for moments of envy or jealousy and to be able to counter it, thinking about the hidden variables that might be able to enable us to rejoice in the good things that land in our neighbor's laps.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that the Father always hears our prayers, we offer our needs and intentions. For Bishop Johnston, Father Justin, Father Paul, and all priests, may they be renewed in spirit, fruitful in their ministry, and appreciated by the people whom they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those discerning a call to the priesthood, and for those God calls upon to witness their gifts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our earthly home, may God grant us the grace to love, respect, and care for her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Guatemala, may God continue to guide our relationship and deepen our fellowship to the blessing of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Mary Tarwater, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we bring to Mass, including Al Safadi, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as you hear and answer these prayers according to your will, we ask for graces that we might be able to incorporate the hidden variables that you consider in responding to our needs with a generous heart. Help us to participate more fully in your generosity in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join in singing number 623, Isaiah 49, number 623. forget 
let you, I will not leave you a friend, I will never forget my own. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Thomas More, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Have mercy, have 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we process to receive the Eucharist, please join in singing number 320, I Received the Living God, number 320. and 
my spirit you shall know. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Our second communion song is number 322, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 322. No, sorry, 332. 332. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat with joyful lips. We sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share, the blood of Christ our poor? Do not one cup, one loaf declare, I want this in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our heart to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Let us pray.
Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. A word of welcome to visitors and to parishioners who are back with us after an extended absence. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month collecting non-perishable items for Seton Center and the local Redbridge Food Pantry. Next Saturday morning, Outpace Poverty, the Catholic Charities 5K, holds its event on the campuses of STM and Avila University. We are looking for walkers, runners, and donors of all ages to join our STM team led by our pastoral associate, Peggy. This Friday evening, the Knights of Columbus host a charity Texas Hold'em tournament in Moore Hall. This Thursday, there are no 5 p.m. confessions scheduled. As mentioned, this is Guatemala weekend. Please visit our displays in the narthex to see the investments made, the witness of parishioners who have traveled to Guatemala, and opportunities to offer financial support for our long-term ministry. And again, if you'd like to support it, but not so today, take one of those envelopes with you. You can drop it into the collection basket at another time in the future. Eucharistic Adoration is held in the church following Sunday's 11 o'clock Mass until 9 p.m. For details on any of these events, check out our bulletin website weekly email blast or scan the QR code in the pews. Uh, this weekend, this is an aside, this is also a Priesthood Sunday weekend. Um, I just want you to know I love being a priest. Uh, it is... It is uh, <laughs> I, I won't lie, there are more weeks where there are lousy days than there were 10 years ago. But that being said, uh, I, I love this vocation. I'm grateful to be a priest. Uh, it's, it's an honor for me to be able to do this, and I love being your priest, uh, St. Thomas More parishioners. So uh, pray for our young men to consider a call to uh, the priesthood. Um, it's, it's a great brotherhood. It's a great fraternity. And uh, we need more uh, because, uh, obviously, I could use some help. So uh, pray, pray for vocations. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our closing song is number 5490. There's a wideness in God's mercy. Number 490. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in His justice, which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. at his word and our lives would be thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord troubled souls why will you scatter like a crowd of frightened sheep foolish hearts why will you wander from a love so true and deep Come for the sinner, and more grace is for the good. There is mercy with the Savior, there is healing.